This program is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen. A public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Major support comes from Norfolk State University. Seize the opportunity for the high-demand, high-reward jobs you want at Norfolk State University. The world needs people with degrees in science, technology, engineering, math, and healthcare. Norfolk State leads Hampton Roads with world-class faculty and facilities. Interested in solving complex problems, creating real breakthroughs to shape the future? Open the door to your future. Find out more at nsu.edu. Norfolk State University, achieving excellence, success beyond measure. WHRO produced challenging circumstances, a dropout epidemic, to look at how this critical issue not only affects our community, but the entire nation. Every 26 seconds, a child makes the decision to drop out of school, and they do so for a variety of reasons. But regardless of the cause, it's a decision that will profoundly impact what they'll earn for the rest of their lives. And it also affects the rest of us. It deprives our community of an educated workforce, and it adds to the cost we bear as taxpayers to address issues like poverty and crime. It's a serious problem, but we can change the outcome. Solutions to the Dropout Crisis looks at individuals and organizations doing just that. Later, we'll show you how to get involved. And now, solutions to the Dropout Crisis. If you think this region's dropout crisis is someone else's problem, think again. Everywhere you look, the landscape can and will change if something isn't done to keep students in school. Without educated workers, the number of jobs that would disappear could run into the thousands. Not only would the dwindling workforce cause production to stop, but many of the services that we take for granted would vanish. Services we rely on for our very existence. The challenging circumstances that keep students from graduating are many. Poverty, homelessness, and teen pregnancy are just a few. Monique Hardy always wanted to finish school, but dropped out of Chesapeake's Oscar Smith High School when she became a teen mom. I was on bed rest at five months, and when she came, it, it became a little hard to do both. So I decided to, you know, just stop going. Monique got married and decided to focus on family life. And when my daughter was about five, like three or four, um, I decided to go back to school. But as she got older, she needed me more too, so I had to focus more on her. It would take Monique another four years before she could get back to her education. But she knew if she wanted a better life, she'd have to. But a lot had changed and getting back into her studies was not easy. And my daughter and I, we talk a lot, and we had a conversation. And she was like, Mommy, did you pass the test? And I told her no one time I didn't pass. And she, she started crying, and she was like, Mommy, I'll never get to see you walk across the stage. That was all Monique needed to hear. She was now determined to finish. She calls the road to getting her GED a long fight, a battle she fought and won, but not one she'd recommend. If you have a child and you can get help with the babysitting and stuff, I would recommend you do that because getting a GED is harder than getting a diploma. It's best to stay in school. It's been a long, tough road, but Monique is now a sophomore at Bryan and Stratton College, studying to be a medical administrative assistant. And after her own experience, her message to her daughter regarding her education is this. She has no choice but to finish. She's not going to follow through what I've done. She's going to go on. While pregnancy is the number one reason that teenage girls leave school, it's not the only one. Some girls and boys alike attribute their decision to drop out to a lack of interest. That was Letitia Burgess's case. It was just kind of boring and I never realized how important education was. So I was just, you know what I'm saying, goofing around, skipping school. I missed a lot of days in school, probably more than half of a year. 
Letitia found her way back to a brighter future by enrolling in the Virginia Commonwealth Challenge Youth Academy. The 22-week program is dedicated to helping at-risk teens get a second chance. This boot camp type environment provided the discipline and structure that Letitia needed to focus and stay on course. But currently the military does not take just a GED, they want a high school diploma or a GED and 15 credit hours from a local community college. So I would say roughly 2% of our cadets go into the military. Most go to jobs or to uh, education, further on education. I want to go to Thomas Nelson for two years and then I want to go to a medical school. I want to be a prenatal doctor in the Air Force. Because your education is the best thing that you need right now. Everything else that you think is important isn't important. Most who leave school before graduating face huge obstacles. Some get trapped in the cycle of poverty. Some turn to drugs or criminal activity. One of the dropouts' biggest challenges is finding work. The unemployment rate for dropouts is nearly twice that of the national average. If the high school dropout finds work, it's usually not a permanent position. And the rewards aren't good. He or she can expect to earn about $10,000 less each year than a person with a high school diploma. Unemployed or underemployed workers also lower America's tax revenue. The cost to society is massive. America spends more than $300 billion a year paying for programs like health care, welfare, and incarceration. 43-year-old Rodney Williams wishes to this day that he'd stayed in school and graduated. Without no education, there is no job for you, unless it's a manual labor job. And you ain't going to keep that long because you ain't going to be working in the sun all day or sometimes in the cold. Rodney says throughout his life, he's gotten into quite a bit of trouble, trouble he believes he would have avoided had he stayed in school. I've been back and forth to court a lot, and I do, I do put that on not having a good education also. You know what I'm saying? Because if I did have a good education, I would have learned the law, and I would have followed the law. But Rodney Williams' path has been paved with problems. Uh, a lot of trespassing charges, uh, failure to appears, uh, uh, petty larceny, uh, drug charges, uh, robbery charge. You know, a lot of stuff that a lot of stuff that I, if I went to school and got a good education, I could have got a good job and we had to worry about doing that because I was doing it for them getting some money. See, but when you ain't got education, you ain't got no balance in your life, so you really don't care. How does this affect us on the world stage? Many local businesses want to compete globally, but without an educated workforce, their ability to do so decreases dramatically. Louisa Strayhorn is the executive director of From One Hand to Another, a local program designed to bring at-risk students up to speed. We are now in the shameful position of having 31 countries, including the Czech Republic and Austria, um, who are um, ahead of our students in math assessment exams. By the year 2018 to 2025, we're going to have an amazing deficit and the number of children who will grow up and be able to take the jobs that are waiting in industry right now. Strayhorn, who served as the Director of Business Assistance during Governor Tim Kaine's administration, says, over the past 10 years, companies have spent $3 billion in fees bringing foreign nationals here to take jobs that American students are unable to take. We're not giving them the right tools, and so in order to bridge this particular skills gap that we have going on within the United States, we need to find organizations who will partner with corporations so that we can fill some of those, those jobs, and there's no reason why we shouldn't. We are a can-do country, we can do this, but we have to change our strategies. Turning this situation around is possible, and the tools to do it are not expensive ones. But it starts with a willingness to be that catalyst for change. From one hand to another is making things happen by partnering with Crestline Hotels and Resorts. It was just a natural connection to want to get involved because I knew that many of the housekeepers that worked at the oceanfront and here at the Westin 
have kids that go to those schools, you know, live in those areas. And to see them be able to benefit from something um, would be great for them, for their families. The other part about it, always is for me is looking for opportunities to expose children to our industry. The executive chef for Crestline's Weston Hotel at the Virginia Beach Town Center loves the idea that they can expose young people to their industry and get them thinking about it early on. Scott Bernheisel shared his conversation with one student. Before meeting Scott, the young man's goal was to be a fry cook at his favorite fast food restaurant. But after seeing what Scott does for the Weston, he now wants to be a chef and has his sights set on culinary school. The United Way works tirelessly through programs like GiftLink and VolunteerServe to connect businesses, services, and supplies with people in need of them. We can't do it without the community. We have some great research that came out of Boston College that showed that the factors that impact educational attainment for children, especially children in poverty, only 33% of that rests in the hands of schools. 67% of the factors that impact the ability of a child to succeed in education rest in with the community. Everything else, how healthy that child is, their access to mental health services, before school, after school programs. All those services impact their ability to succeed as a student. One such connection came when GiftLink connected Checkered Flag with Norfolk's PB Young Elementary. Thanks to GiftLink and Volunteer Serve, Checkered Flag was able to supply the PB Young Library with some badly needed shelves. Three boxes of apples, two trays of eggs, and don't forget the cheese. Faith-based organizations like Norfolk's Trinity Presbyterian Church also understand that the dropout crisis is everyone's problem. Jack Howell, the church's senior pastor, along with his congregation, started working with the children in the Young Terrace community about seven years ago. So, you know, when a largely white church comes into a, a community like this, it takes a long time to begin to build credibility in the community and trust, particularly with one's children. So what we found is you just keep showing up. We keep trying to show up in the mornings to do an early uh, literacy program. We show up in the afternoons to do homework clubs and to try and address specific learning deficits or needs. We try to show up every summer with a high quality sports and arts camp that provides a safe, fun environment for these children to, to receive something that probably many of our suburban middle class families would all take for granted. Trinity Presbyterian started the Homework Club about three years ago and recently started an urban garden. My secret weapon are these kids because once I can get my adults, my very busy working people to connect with a child and this child's story, then they're in. And we want to say that it really does take all of us on the west side, on the east side, everybody in this city joining in to care for those that uh, that through no fault of their own again, haven't done anything to have the absence of opportunities or access to services or care. And we want in a very modest way to, to ameliorate that. The volunteers at Equikids in Virginia Beach are a great example of how helping one helps us all. Here, volunteers work with people of all ages who face mental and physical challenges. The results are twofold inspiring and boosting the self-esteem of the riders while touching the lives of the volunteers. I think it's awesome just because every day you see something different with the riders and every day they like get off of the horse with such a big smile so it kind of gives you a sense of accomplishment just being a part of that and making them happy because they can't get involved with kids their own age for reasons because of their disability. Some of the younger volunteers are students facing challenging circumstances themselves. Now we do have a lot um, of at-risk youth that do come out here um, that want to interact with our horses and we've had a lot of um, youth come out here for community service as well um, and that has helped them um, tremendously particularly um, because they are able to see the interaction that these horses are having with these children with disabilities and it gives them a sense of um, you know, a sense of purpose, almost, that they are able to see these children being able to do what they can do, and it gives them a sense that, you know, maybe they should be doing what they should be doing, so. Hundreds of volunteers a year play a crucial role in making sure Equikids run smoothly. 
say what the 26 Seconds campaign is about, right? I mean, is everyone here aware of what it's about? That a high school student drops out of school every 26 seconds. Getting involved in order to generate change is a mission that one Peninsula youth group also takes very seriously. And so we're trying, you know, raise awareness on that to prevent high school students from dropping out. Youth Act works tirelessly to turn communities in Hampton around. One thing these young people realize is that to make a difference, you've got to understand the issue. Throughout the year, they put initiatives into action to empower their peers to stay on track, graduate, and make their own plan for success. These teens also understand that preparation is a key factor. They don't provide a lot of programs. 17 year old Sheena Bynum, whose friends call her Mocha, was happy to share her thoughts on the dropout crisis. I think it could be stopped. It just takes a little more effort than people just getting the issue out there and just saying, well, we should do this, we should do that, and actually, you know, getting down and getting down, getting dirty, and doing something about it. And that's just what Youth Act does. The name is an acronym for Youth Achieving Change Together. These teens who are trained as leaders jump right in. They learn through training and firsthand experiences. Me personally, I wasn't, you know, raised in a typical home with a mother and father. I was, I've been in about three foster homes. So my challenge there was already was that I wasn't stable. And when you're not stable, you don't, you know, function well. Fellow Youth Act leader, 16-year-old Jackie Keener, says there are so many outside influences tied to the dropout crisis, but we can't let that slow us down. You have to figure out what are the issues that mostly affect the kids in your community, which ones you can actually do something about, and, which, and how you're going to do it. The teens also implement techniques like Howard Gardner's Eight Intelligences to show their peers that people learn differently while teaching them how to identify their own gifts as well as what careers are connected to certain gifts. So I think for a lot of these kids it gave them hope. Like, wow, I may not be good in math, but you know what, I'm music smart or I'm nature smart. And so by learning how they were intelligent in the world, it kind of gave them um, some options. Well, maybe I could go be a conductor. And they delve even further, talking to the students about dating violence and how to have healthy relationships through a program called RELATE. When we're talking about RELATE, we can talk about some real sensitive issues. These young mentors say their peers often respond better when they're learning from someone their own age. I believe it helps because a lot of kids like don't take heed to what parents say. So if they hear from someone they're in their age group, then they start to realize that the stuff that they're getting from their parents is true because they're getting it from their peers as well. Well, we feel that trust is the most important because it's the building block of their relationship. But instead of an adult doing it and them feeling like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say this because it's an adult and they might judge me for it. If it's a peer doing it, it's a very different level of like comfort. So they're actually relatable to them as well. I think it's important that students always have someone to turn to emotionally with their education. I mean, everything. You cannot do this on your own. Norfolk State University is also working to make sure high school students get the help they need to graduate on time. That's how many units? Six. That's your answer. That's your product. NSU's Spartan Crusade for Academic Success, or SCAS, connects the university with schools like nearby Booker T. Washington High School to make sure students stay on track. They meet on our campus the first and third Saturday of every month. We engage them in different STEM activities um, from making ice cream using liquid nit nitrogen, um, studying physics, launching um, rockets. Um, we also uh, work with them on SAT prep. We do verbal and math, and we also do college prep with our students. Students prepping for college entrance exams know this kind of extra help is key. It helped me a lot. Um, it helped me um, learn bigger words, so when I, when I do take the test, I can know some words up there. Educators here understand that a successful high school student is more likely to go on to college. Last academic year, we serviced 53 students. 
Um, in the summer, we have a summer component, and we had approximately 47 high school students who were on our campus for six weeks. They worked for six weeks in one of the offices around campus. They also did research in one of our science labs on campus. Um, and they also got to experience what it's like to live on campus. And so they stayed in the dorms for two weeks and they did research on water conservation. It inspired me more to go to school because it's fun. It's not just all about learning. It's about having fun sometimes too. My SAT scores were a little low and my brother actually introduced me to the program. And I did some work here. Uh, did, we did a few practice. We practiced on like on reading comprehension, and that's basically all I needed doing writing, and it helped me raise my score high enough to get in here to Nova State, and I'm at the Mid Rise Dormitory. That education is is needed. Like with our education, there's not too much at all that you can do, and there's money out there. There's this program showed me that actually, that there's a lot out there. Employers in the Hampton Roads region are very well aware that the more you learn, the more you earn. So many companies have training programs designed to take the high school graduate to the next level. The apprenticeship program at Newport News Shipbuilding is one such example. The 126-year-old company is the largest employer in Hampton Roads and rely on young people coming in to sustain it into the next century. Youth is a very powerful resource for our company and it's very interesting, amazing and exciting to see young people come in and really learn the rigors associated with shipbuilding and fall in love with it because quite often they end up staying with us for a career. Once a student graduates from high school, the apprenticeship program allows them to earn while they learn. Today we have almost 400 graduates of the school in positions as uh, waterfront supervisors across our company. And then as well we have almost 400 graduates that are in our middle management uh, level and above general foreman up through superintendent and trade director. So these opportunities exist. Uh, from the very earliest stages once they complete their apprenticeship uh, with, with virtually no limits to where they may go. Emily Harrell is studying to be an electrical designer at the Apprentice School. Emily graduated from high school and was accepted into college but found she couldn't afford it. That's when her father, a former Apprentice School graduate himself, encouraged her to apply. The apprentice school is kind of like you're starting off enlisted and going officer, so you get the background training before you get the position, so you know what you're doing when you get to that supervisor or higher position, so that's what I like about it. You have a guaranteed job, you get a free education, you get paid to sit in school, so you're basically learning a trade, getting paid for all of that, so there, you really can't beat it. There's nothing out there like it. I mean, you can go get a college education, but then you got, what, thousands of dollars of loans, not a guaranteed job, so I would definitely recommend this. Here at the Apprentice School, it's a great opportunity because they're very supportive for, for their students. They work with you, even if you're not strong academically, they have programs set up and teachers that are, are rally around you to help you advance academically. Um, as well as, you know, getting your, your academics, you get on the job training, you learn a trade which will be valuable in any type of situation. These students and these graduates will ultimately become the leaders of our company for many decades to come. The region's second largest employer, Sentara Healthcare, also has training programs in place for the high school graduate interested in a career in the medical field. The um, most entry level positions require a high school diploma or GED, so there are lots of opportunities. Formed in 2005, the School at Work program allows Sentara employees to advance in their career even further by providing them with a college level education. Yes, I'm 27 and I am already have regrets about education on and how I approached education. You know, some people say that, you know, you gotta play with the fire to get burnt. Why why even play with the fire to begin with? The likelihood of you succeeding without a degree, even without a college degree now, is is not good. The percentages are lower. So you have to continue education in order to succeed. Sintera also offers a very strong sense of job security. 
so that once someone starts a career at Sentara and continues to do well, they won't have to worry that due to a business change or volume change that they would ever be out of a job. So if a position needs to be eliminated, we work to find that person a new job at Sentara. With these opportunities, Sentara is a great option for students who hang in there and graduate high school. Jennifer McFarlane joined the program specializing in cardiovascular technology. Being of the world now, it's so much harder without your education. At least go out and, and specialize, become something that separates you apart from everybody else because as long as you fit in a field with everybody else, then your opportunities of moving forward are just so slim and it's, it's just not going to be productive and you're going to end up going back later in life trying to finish what you should have done when you were in high school. Both Jennifer and Michael finished the program and are working in vascular technology at Sentara Healthcare. We've only had time to show you a few, but there are hundreds of programs and thousands of people across Hampton Roads working each and every day to turn this education crisis around. Educators, volunteers, and business owners who understand that the schools can't do it alone and that when our children fail, we fail as a community, as a region, and ultimately as a nation. If you'd like to be a part of the solution, log on to our website at americangraduate.whro.org. There you can join the initiative and connect with community partners. For American Graduate, let's make it happen. I'm Lisa Godley. This program is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Major support comes from Norfolk State University. Seize the opportunity for the high demand, high reward jobs you want at Norfolk State University. The world needs people with degrees in science, technology, engineering, math and healthcare. Norfolk State leads Hampton Roads with world class faculty and facilities. Interested in solving complex problems, creating real breakthroughs to shape the future? Open the door to your future. Find out more at nsu.edu. Norfolk State University, achieving excellence, success beyond measure.